everyone. Today I thought would be the perfect opportunity to film a short video about how we house our chickens and what our chicken coop looks like. We are in Northwest Ohio. It's two days till Thanksgiving and it's been super cold. We got a break in weather. It's going to be a glorious 50 degrees today, which is so exciting. I can't believe I'm out here in a sweater right now. So for us personally, because we have quite a bit of space available for our chickens, we do give them a lot of space to roam. Now before this, we lived in town and they had a much smaller setup and that's totally fine too. Chickens are extremely flexible, but if you do have a little bit more space to offer and you're looking for some ideas, maybe this will spark a little bit of inspiration. So let's go check it out. Hey buddy. Okay, I'm gonna start with the coop area. So we have this nice barn, which is totally awesome. And when we first moved in, this overhang was completely empty. So you could see all the way through it. There was nothing there. Um, maybe I can post a picture of that. I'll try to add that in there. When we moved in, it was February and our poor chickens had nowhere to stay. So they were in a little pop-up um, place in the barn. They were not very happy. So <laughs> this was the first thing that I built um, when we got to this property. So I framed it in, it's nice because there's already a concrete floor, no predators can dig under, and it's already roofed. So that really helps with the smell. If you know anything about chickens, when there's uh, wetness, that's when they start to become kind of stinky. So I just used regular old pine and I spray painted it. And then for our latches, I love these with like the little carabiner clips. This is my go-to style of latch for basically every bird cage. For example, here's one of our quail cages. Same type of latch. They are awesome. And then I just have a backup here too. Hi girls. Okay, so here is inside the coop. It's pretty spacious. I'm actually not sure how big it is. We have 12 hens, um, one rooster, and then a couple young roosters that are gonna need processed. I don't recommend putting cats in your coop. Okay, thankfully she does not try to eat the chickens, but we're gonna just tell you to stay out there, miss. Okay, so the basics for our coop is we use sand um, as a substrate. And this is really nice because when it's time to clean, I just take this metal kitty litter scooper and you can just scoop up and sift out anything that you need to clean. I already cleaned the coop today, so there's not much to show, but you get the idea. So we refresh this with a few more bags of construction sand about once per year. And other than that, they are good to go. And it's nice to not have to purchase gobs of bedding and just spend so much money that's not necessary. So for food, we did the chicken feeders for a long time. And then I discovered uh, rubber pans and how awesome they are. That one had food in it for them this morning. Uh, that one's got some water in it that they've gotten dirty. This little hen's molting. Oh, you poor thing. Um, because it's been cold, I've been using the rubber pans a lot more for the water. But this is our main watering system is the chicken nipples. This is great for spring, summer, fall. It's a little bit harder in the winter. But basically the idea is, is they peck these little nipples and the water comes out. And it's nice because your water stays clean and they're not kicking like food or dirt or poop into it. So you just refill it as needed. So those are awesome. If you don't use chicken nipples, I got these on Amazon. Okay, so for our coop and the nesting boxes, I just use leftover hay for um, 
the nesting boxes that the goats have thrown on the ground. And then if you have new layers that are still trying to find the nesting boxes, putting some golf balls in there looks like fake eggs to them. So it's a nice little trick to get them to lay where you want, want them to lay. Hey, pretty girl. And both the coop and the nesting boxes I actually built out of old shelving units. So one of our old houses, uh, the person before us had left all of these wooden shelving units and they were kind of getting wobbly and such. So I didn't really want to put anything on them. So I tore them apart and made a chicken coop out of them. And then the top's just plywood, which of course they like to jump up there and poo all over as well. Got a couple of roost poles for them. There's one there, one over there. And then inside the coop is pretty spacious. Hopefully it's not too dark in there to see, but yeah, you can see okay. Lots of roost poles for them to choose from. Also use sand in here. And then my favorite thing for coops too, for um, keeping the stink down is sprinkling um, a product called Sweet PDZ. I'll post a little picture of that too. And our chickens are also spoiled because they have a stereo. We get music out here too. That was already there. You'll see some tarps also. With the uh, winter weather, I do tarp part of the coop, not the whole thing. And then I don't have an automatic coop door. I've thought about it a number of times, but I'm just kind of being lazy about installing one. So here's their little door that I have to manually open and close morning and night. Same type of hooks one of those and one of these guys more carabiner clips I have yet to see a raccoon or any type of predator be able to get one of these open honestly and especially when I'm wearing gloves sometimes it's hard for me to get them open <laughs> so I would like to think I'm a little bit more operable than a raccoon although I know they can be tricky there's Big Daddy Citrus. Big Daddy Citrus fathered 42 chicks this year. We got lots of meat in the freezer and a lot of other families got really nice hens. Thanks Citrus. Okay, they're all looking at me now because they saw me go in the barn and get some scratch grains for them. I'm gonna give them this because otherwise they're gonna follow me all around the pasture looking for snacks. There you go, everybody. Okay, so for our outside area, um, I started off with this portable omelet fencing, which is really neat. I, I love this fencing. It is kind of pricey though. So on this back end here, we just have chicken wire and like plastic movable fence posts. But this omelet fencing up here by the coop entrance offers us a gate so if you just unclip these guys like that you have a gate so now i can go in i'm not gonna go in right now but i'll show you how it latches down here okay move the leaf out of the way okay so this guy here just goes into the hole there and then you can just reclip it it's all easier to do two-handed of course but that's nice I really do like the omelet fence for up here by the coop entrance so I'll try to get a zoom out here okay so there's the outside of the coop and then they're fencing extends quite a ways. I have added on to the fencing over time 
I did not do all this at once. It was kind of a span of a year and a half. I just had a little bit more fencing as I go. So, um, there are a lot of hawks around here. However, these spruce trees offer the chickens all the protection they need. We are yet to lose one to a hawk. Um, so that's nice. We also have a little army of blackbirds that live in these trees and they will dive bomb any birds of prey and chase them away. I know this isn't feasible to have a big open space like this for some areas because your chickens would just get picked off all the time by aerial predators. But if you can make their house um, and pasture somewhere near trees like this, these trees are more difficult for birds of prey to land on than it is for a deciduous tree like this. These are really easy for um, them to sit on. Thankfully, this tree's never been a problem. The other thing that we have going for us to keep the hawks away is that these trees are really close to the barn, which is quite tall. So if the chickens are out here and they spot anything, they will run up here and it's really difficult for a, uh, like a hawk to try to swoop down because of the barriers here. Um, they just have a lot that they could possibly run into. And we do have some bald eagles around here also, but they've never, never been an issue. So everybody has lots of space. Happy birds, enjoying all of those pumpkins. So thank you to everybody that has brought us pumpkins that they no longer needed because the chickens do love it. Okay, I don't know what else to say other than that's a wrap. See you next time.